Oh, what a cute little guy. Who's a fluffy little small monster? He had you in on my sleeve. Yes, you are. Oh, I can't wait for some break where I get to play with you and it's gonna be so. Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome as once again we have been teased. We have been thoroughly tantalized. We have been looked into the face by Capcom. And by God has Sunbreak made us blush. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'll be honest with you. But what I do know where I'm going, I'm going do know where going is with, is... Our latest official Sunbreak tease info reveal really hits the spot. Yes, indeed. Uh, so without further ado, well, let's have a little read, shall we? Let's take a look at the new locale announced for Sunbreak. So that is, of course, you know, the castle ruins under the blood moon! That was... was that okay? Was that... was that alright? Am I allowed to... am I allowed to do that? There's not fucking werewolves watching this going, HOW DARE HE! Anyway... The visuals feature an old ruined castle that gives off an eerie atmosphere when viewed against the dark purple sky. So this is already really nice to know, because of course, they're referring to the sky as purple. Purple is not a normal sky color. That instantly is the implication that the sky is being weird. It's being, well, up to something. It's hatching an evil plot, and we're going to hunt under its gaze a hell of a lot. So that's exciting, because long have I proposed this theory that the sky being kind of nighttime or a blood moon or purple as it were is caused by whatever the big bad elder dragon at the end will be. Malzano has been encouraged to, you know, be more active because of it, but, you know, isn't the real reason. He's more a symptom of the problem than the problem itself. Kind of the classic that they like to use in recent cycles of Monster Hunter. I really can't shake the feeling that the sky has to be a key component in, well, Sunbreak, given how strong the Sunbreaking is and has a visual effect amongst every big climactic battle in Monster Hunter history. Oh, and if you do like these regular little analysis of all the little teasers we get, everything up to date and brought straight to you with hot, fresh excitement, I don't know what I'm saying, but if you do and would like us to stick around like Pro Noob to keep existing, the channel does still be here, please consider supporting us on Patreon down below. No matter what or how or when, it all means the absolute world and is the reason we can still exist. So, seriously, thank you. In any case, of course, the castle itself is going to be fantastic fun to fight in. Actually, having a non-natural zone in a otherwise larger map is really cool, and I'm excited to see how it will actually interplay with the monsters that you can fight in it. I imagine it might be like a big courtyard area, old-school Fatalis style, that we can throw down in with wire bugs. Moving on then, because yes, there is more to move on. <laughs> It also features a distinctive ecosystem that's different from the one surrounding Kimura Village. So this obviously means different from the Shrine Ruins. And this immediately is interesting, because I still think this supports the idea that we might be going for a Guiding Lands-esque route, that Lunagaron, given that we cannot find his intro landscape in one of the existing maps, is part of the Sunbreak map, but we also know the Sunbreak map has the castle, has some grassland, has a mixture of terrain. So the idea of it's more diverse across it to therefore allow for a more diverse set of monsters really does appeal and also makes sense. We know then that it's going to be distinctive from the Shrine Ruins. The Shrine Ruins is a bit mountainy, a bit rocky, it's got grass, it's got trees, it's kind of a low intensity forest. Can, can I use that? A low intensity forest? So that's quite a basic environment environment, but that also kind of describes the look at El Cardo that we get uh, from uh, Rondine's sister's boat, both in the Lunagaron at reveal and uh, the informational uh, screenshots on the new Wyvern Ride settings that we got the other day. So that's very, very much exciting to imagine, okay, well, what kind of terrain is it going to be if it is distinctive? Because distinctive is a big word, that's very much not like. So, if it's going to be distinctively not trees, grassland, rocky hills, then the answer to what it will be, I imagine, is quite interesting. And then, of course, we get our lovely little reveal of this charming 
I mean, I guess, slaughter scene, where our new uh, small monster herbivore proves to be apparently not a herbivore, munching down on this poor hunter's head as he's just trying to have a good time in the castle part of the new map under the, well, red, or I guess purple sky. So we have two of these new herbivores munching on both hunters. The second one kind of comes in from the left, little sneaky on. And of course we got two sets of Palico Palamoon. It's essentially a two-man hunt with the extra buddyage going on in this castle zone. That doesn't really tell us a huge amount. Though, the hunters on the left, are they in like, a carriage? Or like a, like a, a cage? Is it, is a weird representation of a cart? Like, that's kind of interesting, to say the least, because it's moving, it's being pulled along. Is, is the herbivore, like, tied to it? Is, is it, is it moving it along? Is it, is it like a, a horse-drawn box? A horse-drawn bo- Why did I not just say a horse-drawn carriage? There's literally a term for it! Oh yes, good sir, would you like to go downtown in your horse-drawn box? Well, thank you, Reginald, I would. Ah! In any case, maybe that's how the residents of Elgado of the Great Region of Sunbreak actually use these animals. Perhaps they are more, well, utility-filled than you would think, but they're quite low to the ground and they look very powerful, so I, that's a little bit weird. And maybe that, the, the big kind of hand-looking thing is actually a big hand-looking thing. Maybe there's a giant person under there holding this hunter cube. Who knows? It's kind of abstract and obviously not a lot to get out of it. But what isn't abstract, or at least in terms of its implication, is our mysterious shadow on the right. This right here is, I mean, a new monster. There's no real other way to interpret it because we simply don't have a monster that kind of fits the profile here. Unless, of course, it's Dalamadur! Okay, no, I don't really think it's Dalamadur, although that would be hilarious, but it doesn't make any sense at all, nor does it actually look like it. Look, I'll be honest with you, more than likely, this will just be a new basic raptor entry-level monster in Sunbreak. It's got the two floppy ears, it's kind of got the curve up with the hand coming out, the little, like, raptor claw, and it's just having a little watch from the shadows. It's very much got that raptor bird wyvern profile, and I can only assume we're just going to get introduced to its floppy self pretty soon once we start playing Sunbreak. And I do say floppy self because it has this kind of weird, like, drip just flopping off its face. <laughs> so maybe it's, like, heavily saliva-based, or maybe even slime-based, please? Or it's got some kind of secrety uh, substance that it fights with. Though the floppy ears, which definitely do look like ears, because I don't think horns would kind of curve forward like that. Again, it's an abstract drawing. The only real factual hard takeaway from here is, oh look, it's a tease of a, of a sunbreak monster in shadowy form. Ooh! And I really have been through every single monster in the entirety of the Monster Hunter roster, and really nothing kind of comes close to uh, matching up with this general aesthetic. And Unless, of course, we are getting preemptive confirmation of a Pokemon collab, and that is Gudra. Which it kind of weirdly does look like, almost, to me, I, I think. In any case, that's very, very exciting to see, because it really could be, I mean, anything. What I will say is, basic low-level monster, likely a raptor, and it uses some sort of substance that it makes in large amounts to fight. That's, that's kind of where I'm going, but it's cool to see this whole thing go on here. And it could be a scavenger monster, that could be why it's in the castle ruins looking for something a la Kulo Yaku, so that would be interesting. But yeah, there's a lot to look at here. There really, really is, and it's lovely that we're getting these teasers. They're sort of the perfect kind of teasers where you can see a lot to take away from it, you can read into it, you can make connections and good logical leaps and guesses, but it's also kind of vague enough that uh, it really doesn't give much away, and when we do know the truth, you can go back and look at it and go, oh, of course, how did I not see that? So, yeah, it really is nice to see. So, that's about what I got for this. There's not a crazy amount to delve into, but it is probably the biggest one so far. What do you guys think? I really would like your thoughts here. It uh, is always a pleasure to read your theories too and have that conversation going. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Please consider supporting the future channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, 
a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye.